When it comes to the internet, there is a massive opportunity right now to learn a lot of powerful skills and a lot of strategies for making money online, building your business, creating a side hustle. But unfortunately, there's also a lot of bad advice. And that's true when it comes to YouTube as well. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about some common bad advice that a lot of the YouTube experts give. And I'm gonna be honest, I've been guilty of giving this advice as well. But in 2020, right now, you can't afford to follow this advice in my opinion and it could really hurt you so stick around and here's why um i just read this in the new york times it said how bad is unemployment i'm streaming and recording this from las vegas and um this is coffee with cannell and how bad is unemployment literally off the charts 20 million 500 000 jobs were lost in April here in the US. I uh, My business is based here in Vegas. And so around the world, we're living through some absolutely crazy times. So you can't afford to follow bad advice. But hey, if we're just meeting, uh, my name is Sean Cannell. I wrote a book called uh, YouTube Secrets. And my passion is helping you build a high profit and high impact YouTube channel um, and master really social media and online business right now. Um, I've been making a lot of mistakes over the year. I've followed a lot of ad bad advice over the years, but recently I just crossed um, a million subscribers over on Think Media and uh, we've built a multiple seven figure business in multiple different niches with about 40 different revenue streams. So I'm here to help you uh, go further, faster, learn from my mistakes. And this show is called Coffee with Cannell. So if you're just joining, what's up, Elba, Shannon, let me know where you're watching from. Shout me out what you're drinking today. I'm sipping some Nespresso um, in a Think Media coffee cup and uh, hit the like button if you're fired up for today's content. I am um, I think this is one of the most important topics we could possibly talk about. And um, today's episode is brought to you by the Think Marketing Podcast. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but if let me know if you've started listening to the podcast yet. We recently launched a podcast that will help you with the best online business, online marketing, and social media skills needed to thrive in the new economy. And that's everywhere, Spotify, Google, uh, YouTube. But today we're talking about common bad advice given by most YouTube experts. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've heard every single YouTube expert give this. I've been guilty of giving this as well. And that bad advice is get ready, follow your passion. Follow your passion. Let me know if you've heard that. T type that out in the comments. Have you ever heard somebody, this isn't just YouTube, people like, oh, you want to be a social media influencer? Just follow your passion. Like, oh, you want to make videos? Just follow your passion. Like, oh, you want to start a business? Just follow your passion. Now, that can be good at times, but where this really stuck out to me and why I think we need to uh, talk about this, and by the way, on Coffee with Cannell for like the first 10 minutes, we're going to talk about this topic, and then I'm going to bring you on to the show, and we're going to talk about uh, Q&A with business and social media. But where this really stuck out to me was recently I uh, had... Peter Voog, a friend of mine on the Video Influencers show. Let me know if you saw this episode. That happens every Saturday on our Video Influencers channel. And he um, was talking about uh, right now, in light of the pandemic, in light of global unrest, in light of unemployment, in light of being on furlough. And you know, my heart goes out to you if you've been disrupted, displaced in terms of your job, your business, what you thought was secure. Um, I think that's a sign of the times. What used to be secure is no longer secure. And in light of all that, Peter said, look, business is business. Follow your passion is bad advice. Sometimes you got to just go make some money. Come on. Sometimes you actually don't need to follow your passion. You actually need to follow profit. So we've talked about this before, and this is our framework about how to pick out your YouTube channel and your niche. All right. And so typically we say, you know, if you're going to pick your niche on YouTube, it should be, what are you passionate about? But what are you also good at proficiency? But what is also profitable? Because if you go, okay, I'm passionate about guitar, but I suck at guitar and I can't even play it very well. Well, then you're not gonna, never going to have a successful YouTube channel there. And then could you have uh, guitar lessons over Zoom? Could you have an online course about guitar? Yes, there's profit. And if you can be in the intersection of all three, that's where the dream is. But listen, right now with what's happening in the world, Follow your passion can be good at bad advice. You got to follow profit. 
And too many people on YouTube and too many YouTube gurus are like, what do you have fun doing? Like, what are you passionate about? When, when your family depends on it, you got to follow the profit, man. And listen, when you follow the profit later on, you can find your passion. I think about it like this. I worked at Red Robin for 10 years. What was one of your first jobs? Tell me in the comments. You know, I worked at Red Robin here in the US. That is a burger restaurant. Uh, I think it's like American burgers and spirits is what the tagline was. 10 years. I started when I was 17 and up until I was 27, um, I was still picking up shifts on the weekends to make tips and I did everything. I was the busser. I was the, uh, <laughs> what else? I was the expo. I was the bird. They had a bird mascot and the clearance between the crotch and the neck was not far enough. So I kind of had to hunch my middle body and my whole manhood was being just crunched. And I, I remember I went to this church and I was dancing in our giant red bird costume. And, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this before. We just got to look this up because this is, this is, this is real. Uh, the red Robin bird, um, restaurant, because there's actually real Red Robins apparently on the internet. Yeah, have you ever seen this bird before? So this is this is where this is where I worked, man. Red Robin. There was me. I've I've been in this costume before. See what see what's happening in the crotchal area right there. Like that's not a very big. By the way, everybody wears this costume too, and so it stinks in there. Like the level of sweat and human breathing. I don't think for coronavirus this would be an acceptable. Um, social distancing, like, you know, you are not getting fresh air inside of there. But um, I worked at Red Robin for 10 years. I'm going to tell you something. I wasn't super passionate about the job. Now, it is my belief that I made it fun. I had a good attitude that no, whatever you do, you do it with all your heart. You do it with gratitude. I believe that you got to be excellent in the season that you're in. And a lot of times, like your victory in private moments is what gives you public victory later by just being faithful, growing your skills. But here's why I went to work. I'm gonna tell you why I went to work at Red Robin. Money. <laughs> like I went to work at Red Robin to get paid. Why? So I could support my wife, Sonia, so that I could pay our mortgage, so that I could buy food, so that I could take care of business. Business is business. Was I passionate about getting inside of that Red Robin costume? I'm the type of person who's going to stir up passion for things, but no, it wasn't my big dream. It wasn't my big passion. I had to just focus on the practical profit to pay the bills. You know, for those that maybe are familiar with like church history, the apostle Paul, 2000 years ago, greatest church planner of all times, really the early spreader of, of Christianity because uh, he started to plant churches and travel. And what a lot of people don't know about him is you think of him as like, well, he's a minister. He's a pastor. He's, you know, he, he does ministry. He's preaching the gospel. No, he had a job and eventually he did that full time, but it says in the Bible that he made tents. And so sometimes you even think I got a passion. I got a calling. I want to, I want to share my voice for justice right now. And listen, I believe that's super important. I want to just kind of share my opinions and shape thoughts in the world. Great. Please do that. Do whatever you want, by the way. You know, like you can do whatever you want on social media. I want to, I've got a message for the world. Great. I want to write books. Awesome. But what are you doing to fund your passion? And I think it's fascinating to me that even when I look at the apostle Paul, his passion was the gospel, but yet he focused on profit and said he made tents all day so he could uh, share the gospel all night. And I think this looks like the practicality of when you're building a side hustle, you work a day job while you're chipping away on your dream job on YouTube. But here's why I think that YouTube gurus and YouTube experts miss it is too often they say, well, start with your passion. No, start with what's going to be profitable. Like start with, because listen, if you're passionate about your topic and you're also good at it, but you can't profit from it, you just have a hobby. And that's why I feel like this is such an important message right now in the midst of coronavirus and a pandemic and unemployment, like you, like doing a hobby online and hoping you make money someday is not the most practical path to actually making serious income and getting results when it comes to YouTube. However, I believe actually, so I don't think you actually need the passion P at the top for even a season. Like that profit and proficiency is enough. Like if you know about it, it's practical, you've researched it, you don't love it. I didn't love 
Red Robin wearing this bird suit, sweating my eyes out, having my man manhood. I'm so, I can't believe we have a son on the way. Like after the damage done by this bird suit, I mean, it's a miracle. No, I, I, I got good at my job and waited tables well. I danced my heart out in that bird costume. And, and yes, you could get bored, but here's why you don't get bored. Because if you just have profit and proficiency, you'll be bored in, if you're not passionate about it. The reason you, you sustain this is because you got a vision. You got a vision for your family. You got a vision for your future. You got a vision for what you want to build. You got a vision for feeding your kids. You got a vision for taking care of your family. You got a vision for giving to your church. You got a vision, listen, for maybe passion projects you want to fund later. You ever heard of a passion project? Oh man, I just I want to like write a book. I want to do digital photography. I've got some passion projects. Well, wouldn't it be nice to have enough profit to fund your passion pro projects? Wouldn't it be nice? So here's before we get into Q and A, and I'll share the link with the team here so we can dive into uh, bringing you on the show. But here's where this really got super clear for me, and that is that um, I was vlogging for 60 days. Now, I'm not going to try to talk you out of vlogging, but I might try to talk you out of vlogging. Okay. So, <laughs> um, I vlogged for 60 days with my wife, Sonia. And one of the most powerful things about doing that was I learned a lot. So it was on my Sean Cannell channel. And, and probably the good news about doing it was I was so exhausted because I had a full-time job and I was, uh, working at a church and, all day long. And then I'd edit like all day, all, all night long or whatever, literally for si like 60 days in a row. So all of these vlogs and, and they were fun. I'm actually thankful for the history. I'm thankful for the lessons. I'm thankful for what I learned. Um, but, uh, here's like the first vlog too. I remember it was actually my friends, Benji and Judy. They sent me a little elf camera and I was like, I guess I'm vlogging. This is, this was the first episode. So this uh, is what got me started out, but this is what I learned doing it. So here's here, here's a little throwback. What year is this? There's my office. I was working at uh, the Church LV in Las Vegas, 2012. Um, just started vlogging. There's our little gear closet. And uh, this was like during a conference. That's Pastor Benny Perez. And I was the director of communications doing TV and social media and so I was vlogging. This is on an Elf 110 HS. What a classic camera. You could probably get one of those for like 60 bucks right now. And so a lot of people want to do this. So like, I just want to do what I'm passionate about, man. I just want to like document my life. I just want to travel. I just want to like travel with my family. Hear me vlogger. I'm not actually saying you should not do that, but follow me. Um, again, why? It's the dream. Like, I just want to do what I want to do. And I remember when I heard Gary Vaynerchuk tell Benji Travis, the co-author of, of YouTube Secrets, he said, the reason that 99% of people are failing on YouTube and the biggest mistake they're making is they're making selfish content. They're making content for themselves. I want to be a famous vlogger. I want to just film my life. I just want to like talk about what I want to talk about and get paid to do it. Well, no freaking duh. Like who doesn't want to do like this? Of course. But what if you thought about the audience first. What does the audience want in business? And this is why today's brought to you by the Think Marketing Podcast. I hope you're subscribed because you got to learn these skills. Subscribe to Think Marketing on Apple or Spotify. In business marketing, you need to do market viability. Is there a market for your content? Is your market even profitable? Can it sustain a certain amount of revenue? A business term you need to know is TAM, T-A-M. What is the total addressable market in your niche? The total addressable market. So what's the total addressable market for vloggers? Well, theoretically unlimited, but you're trying to sell entertainment and there's a lot of competition. Whereas there might be a much more practical path to some other type of niche on YouTube that could actually fund your dream and eventually you could do whatever you want. So after doing this for 60 days, this uh, uh, vlog, um, I, I had a couple clear, clear moments. First of all, I think we had quite a bit of success. And what I mean is the fact that these were getting like 2000 views and, uh, 4,000 views, you know, here's a little morning routine video, got 2,400 views. I need to be logged in my YouTube Reddit account, uh, account. So we don't have to, Ooh, Kiehl's. That's what Sonia makes me use for my 
face. Wow, there's Sophie. There's our dog Rosie. Rest in peace. Miss her so much. And so um, here we are, you know, like work, vlogging. But I saw and I was like, okay, 2,400 views. Kyle Anderson on the Think Media team today. What's up, Kyle? Throwback. Looking, looking 12 years old, ultimately. I think he's 14 now. Um, okay, so after vlogging for a while, I started looking at the views. I started looking at, well, this isn't actually, like, how do you monetize a video like this? Well, people watching this are not watching, they're not watching like a camera review where they're trying to make a buying decision with their credit card in hand, like which camera should I buy, which could lead to affiliate marketing. That's a practical profit perspective. They're just kind of watching for entertainment. And I saw where I was. And thank God I had a full-time job because I was so freaking exhausted after editing 60 days in a row of daily vlogs. And I saw where I wanted to go, financial freedom, autonomy. I want to write books, your passion. I wanted to share my message with more people, my passion. I wanted to, but I thought, oh man, the path I am on might not be practical. Lightly touch the like button if this is resonating with you and if you're getting value out of this video. So I pivoted and this is the clarity I got. And this is why it's great to just post like videos because it's by posting that you get clarity, I believe sometimes, that just by putting out a lot of videos, you learn more about yourself, you learn more about what, what works, what doesn't work. But I was learning like, wow, I actually don't know if there's a practical, like my friend Peter said, business is business. Follow your passion is bad advice during a pandemic. You need to follow profit. You need to follow solving a problem. Entrepreneurs are simply people that solve problems for profit. And there's a lot of problems in the world to solve right now. You might solve problems to help people get in shape, helping people get their personal finances in order, helping people with stock investing, with saving, helping people with health products, with skincare, with makeup, a specific passion. Ironically, even my friends Benji and Judy, her, who have been vlogging for over 10 years now, and have she they have over now a billion views on their main vlog channel. Judy started with a practical YouTube channel, beauty tutorials, hair tutorials, practical. How do you profit? Brand deals, affiliate marketing, YouTube ads. You've actually figured out a business plan. Look, if you want help with this, and this is resonating with you, and you are recognizing, wow, that is bad advice that I've heard before, like just follow your passion. And, and listen, listen, if you want to just have a hobby and get on YouTube, go for it. But one of our passions here at Think Media is to help 10,000 people create a full-time living doing what they love while making a difference in the world with online video. So we want to help 10,000 people go full-time. So I'm obsessed with your success. But if I'm going to get you to full-time, I got to tell you that following your passion sometimes can be bad advice. What you need to do to get full-time is figure out how to go full-time. Figure out how to get your money right. Figure out maybe a vehicle. What's your vehicle to profit? So maybe you join and do direct selling. And people hate on it, but like direct selling can be awesome. Of course, there's bad companies, but you, let's say you get into essential oils. You get into unique makeup direct selling, right? You get into uh, doTERRA essential oils or Young Living or something. And you get into a product that you love and you build up a YouTube channel. Listen that maybe is around lifestyle and day in the life and a lot of fun things. But now you've got a vehicle to, to actually make money because not only can you sell products, but you can sign people up on your team. That's just one way. Like in our advanced trainings, we talk about 51 different ways to make money with YouTube, but you got to get your money right, man. You got to get your profit right, man. And like sometimes people are like, oh, dude, Sean talks about money too much. Well, you don't talk about money enough. Oh, like that's like greedy, like the, you know, the love of money, uh, like, no, the love of money is bad, but money is good. Money is a tool to solve problems. Last time I checked, you can't take subscribers to your mortgage person and say, here, here's how many subscribers I have. You can't even take YouTube views and say, Hey, I got some YouTube views. You can't take Instagram likes. You can't take Facebook likes to your insurance company and say, hey, could I just give you some of my Facebook likes this month? Now you need money, man. Take care of your kids, take care of your family. So let me know if you got value and let me know if you have any questions. Uh, we're uh, getting into uh, the link today and uh, Melissa and Aline, I don't know if y'all are on here. I dropped the link inside of um, a Slack, please share it. 
and uh, we're going to get into some of your um, bring you on the show today for coffee with Cannell. But let's summarize the bad advice that uh, a lot of YouTube experts give and a lot of social media experts give is follow your passion and follow your passion. Take it back to 2019. Better advice, because in 2019, uh, there wasn't a pandemic, man. People made there's more money in the system. But when people are getting laid off and people are being furloughed and people are, uh, um, you know, not able to pay their bills, you got to be real practical about how you're going to generate income, about how you're going to generate money. And so uh, this is Coffee with Cannell. Hit like if you're uh, if you got value out of today. And, um, and think about, let me know what niche you're in and let me know, let me know, let me know this. What is your best way of earning money? How do you plan on earning money with your YouTube channel? Is your YouTube channel a, does it have, what's the profit potential of your YouTube channel? And if you don't know the answers to some of these questions, I want to recommend the Think Marketing Podcast. Let me know if you've been on this, if you've, uh, subscribed to this before or heard about this before. We just talked about affiliate marketing. That's a way to make money. You're going to learn strategies. Talked about how to build your email list. And some of the skills you need to be mastering right now are marketing, our sales, our, our, our business. Sean, I just want to talk about like, I just want to be creative and just like share, you know, my ideas. Cool. But when it's like mission critical time and when the world's melting, you got to go beyond just what you want to do. And sometimes you got to put on a red bird suit and you got to you know, uh, actually, uh, generate some income. And so, uh, man, coffee with candle, hit the like button, uh, check out the think marketing podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, we also have a video podcast so you can subscribe on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed or go over to the YouTube. And there's a think marketing YouTube channel with all kinds of bonus content. We have Chana today, uh, techno dad who is crushing it by the way, Chana, break it down, tell people what you do, uh, you've been a part of our community for a long time, but man, you're killing it with the with the profit, man. You 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 figured out a practical way to profit. You got multiple streams of income. What is it you're doing uh, to make all this stuff happen? Um, thinking outside the box. Um, tomorrow, in fact, we are me and my friends are putting on the very first online hi fi trade show. It's a five day trade show. And we've sold 400 tickets and out of our goal was to have 50 exhibitors. We got 47 and um, yeah, man, it's, it's going to be nuts. So uh, the YouTube channel is doing great. It's making anywhere from 2000 to 4,000 a month. Um, we closed like 20 K in sponsorships in January and February. Um, and that, that's split up between three people. So you know, uh, our strategy was to group together, band together. Um, so with a couple other guys that do the same ish kind of stuff, you know, home audio, home theater stuff. And, um, <clears throat> it's been great, man. Yeah. I get to talk to them all the time. You know, and my wife doesn't get sick of me, sick and tired of me talking about YouTube, you know, um, I could talk to these guys about it and, uh, we're making money, we're having fun and we're just, we're growing. Uh, remember, uh, we, what was it? CES this year, uh, ran into you, right? That's right. And, ran into um, you in the hall. You were like hustling yeah. too. You were like talking to brands and then like taking gear back to the room to like produce and shoot brand deals, like on the spot. Yeah. So things actually changed. So previous, uh, CES, I made 21 videos right in that week. This CES, I made one video. And the rest of the time, it was closing deals with the decision makers of these big brands like Klipsch, like Lenbrook, who owns um, Dolly speakers, NAD. We're talking high end stuff, like high, high price items. Um, and, you know, they're all part of our show. They've been on our weekly. Uh, we do a weekly podcast. We started another channel that's based around our company called Daily Hi-Fi. And every Monday we do like an hour to an hour and a half. And we've got industry big wigs, industry giants coming in and talking to us about, hey, yeah, sometimes they're pushing their new product. But um, this last one uh, this week, we had um, 
this uh, one guy from AIX Records, and he was talking about how the difference between high resolution and low resolution audio, the average person just cannot tell the difference. And he went through this big study, you know, he was uh, working at a college and he was doing this experiment and you can actually go and download all the files and, and be part of the experiment. It's still ongoing right now. And um, it's great, man. We are actually like becoming a foothold or creating a foothold in this industry and we're changing it. It's crazy. Yeah, it's inspiring, man. You're doing so much cool stuff. There was a lot of nuggets and everything you were dropping. And and how long you been at this now? Like when you add it all up, because this you didn't just do this overnight. Like you've been building. Uh, I started the YouTube channel 2016 and in August. And then I joined Video Ranking Academy, your course, um, following year. And um, yeah. Oh, last year. Oh, you know what? I watched the video, uh, the interview that you and I did um, at CES 2019. I had 36,000 subscribers then. I'm just at about 73,000 now. And I actually slowed down on my output because it's more about um, behind the scenes kind of stuff as opposed to just pumping out videos. I can pump out videos like nobody's business, right? Um, I remember when I got VRA, I was doing a daily vlog and you and Benji told me to stop, right? I actually, you guys had that call and, you know, I was the second channel and they're like, your home theater videos are doing really well. I would stop doing the vlogs. And, um, and uh, when I was doing those daily vlogs, I was doing daily vlog and three tech videos a week. So 10 videos a week is what I was pumping out. It was ridiculous. So, um, so yeah, um, I don't need to do that anymore. I'm one video a week, two videos a week. I got a ton of product to get through here. And um, we're just working on more backend stuff. Uh, this trade show thing is huge for us. Uh, so um, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's super exciting. I, I'm totally stoked and I had no idea. Oh, 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 COVID-19. Yeah. If it were not for YouTube. And the money that we were making from YouTube, those first two months um, before my wife's unemployment came in, we would have not been eating anything. Wow. So like all because I DJ weddings. So what happened there? They shut um, down. Yeah, nothing. Nothing's going on. And I don't think I'm going to be DJing a wedding until late August, early September. So all that money is just not happening. Um, so I, I'm super fortunate that I started the YouTube channel when I did, you know, otherwise we would like those first two months would have been rough, rough, man, inspiring by your journey and listen, everybody, that's some powerful stuff. You know, YouTube is not an overnight thing. Chana started back in 2016, uh, but he was smart cause he got strategy and he invested and he learned and we may have just lost him. Oh, he's back. And, uh, he, uh, and he positioned himself for the future. That's what we got to be doing right now. We got to be looking ahead, even though times are hard right now, we got to be thinking about positioning ourselves for multiple streams of income, for uh, in the right niche, in a profitable niche. I love it. But hey, is there anything I can help you with? You got a question about anything? You just wanted to vibe today. Oh, um, I can't hear you. I don't know what's happened. Uh, I got a phone call and I can't hear anything anymore. Um, but I, I've been awake for 26 hours, so... Um, <laughs> How about we just say goodbye for now because I can't hear anything. Take it easy, Sean. Good talk. Appreciate you. you. What a Later. session, man. Love Techno Dad. And uh, man, business is business. Closed 20,000 deals, collabed with a couple of different people, $20,000 in brand deals, partnered up. That was some insight. I love Chana because he's thinking about business development. He's thinking about his profit. This is Coffee with Candle. If you're just joining the replay, you can check. We talked all about the bad advice at the beginning, and today's brought to you by the Think Marketing Podcast. If you haven't subscribed to the Think Marketing Podcast, whether on YouTube, whether on uh, you know Apple, Google, that's where we're going to help you build your business, man. We help business-minded content creators, and you might not be business-minded yet. You're going to learn sales. You're going to learn marketing. You're going to learn social media. It's like the iceberg. YouTube is like the tip of the iceberg. But man, underneath it is like communication, copywriting, sales, business, online marketing, strategy, positioning, all these other skills, 
uh, productivity, right? All that stuff underneath. And so we talk about that on the Think Marketing podcast. But this is Coffee with Cannell, where we bring you on and answer your questions. Uh, Tana, did I say your name right? How's it going? It's Tawana. I'm doing well. Thank you. Tawana, thanks so much for being on. Uh, where are you coming from? That that SUV looks fire. Like what a moon <laughs> roof vibe. That's awesome. Where, where are you streaming I'm, from and what do you do? I'm in Newark, New Jersey. Okay. And I am a local pastor here for the last uh, 11, 12 years. And um, as you know, the pandemic has been, you know, what it has been. So we've been doing a lot of Zooming and um, things of that nature. We have a small ministry, but a powerful ministry. I'm very excited about that. That's amazing. So you guys are doing Zoom meetings? Are you doing any kind of other live stream or that is the live stream? That We're just doing Zoom. I have kind of kept it kind of intimate and personal with my church um, only because there's been so much going on um, yep. on, uh, you know, live stream and things of that nature. So uh, my church, we just kind of felt we we're more comfortable with uh, keeping it simple and intimate. And then they're able to invite people that they would like to invite, but we're definitely not doing any live stream right now. I love it, Tawana. Well, hey, what can I help you with today? Well, I have uh, I have thoroughly, let me say, I have thoroughly enjoyed Think Media and, and VRA. I've joined VRA. I'm super excited about it all. Uh, but there's so much. Um, I have gotten just about everything that you guys have told me. I'm in my car now. I, I have my M50 with me. That's my cool. Adobe and all of, all of the things that you guys have recommended. Um, I have reset my studio at home. Um, my office into a studio to my uh, soft light boxes and and tripods. And, I mean, literally everything. Uh, today I got my uh, my Samsung ter one terabyte drive. Everything. I mean, I probably I went crazy. I happen to be a techie by by nature. Absolutely love technology. Just like um, me. <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely love it. Now, personally, and this is my, this is my thing. Personally, I'm looking to build my YouTube channel. I started some years ago. Um, doing some YouTube, um, and I stopped once my son moved away because he was doing all of the editing, which I knew nothing about. Um, and so we kind of let the the uh, the channel go by the wayside. Um, but I am super ready to get back into it. Um, and I have been the person that you all speak of that let technology get in the way, um, where I figured I needed all of this to get started instead of just pressing record. I'm her. I'm you, you do that again, my picture should come up, literally. Um, and so so now I'm ready to get started. And I, I was listening to you talk. And now, as much as it's my passion, I'm not quite sure how to make it profitable. What's your um, current channel about? Is it ministry, biblical topics, things like that? or it, what's It was, yes. It was definitely biblical topics. It was more kind of leaning towards leadership, motiva motivation, and, and things of that nature from a... Um, from a faith-based perspective. Um, and so I am still very much interested in doing that. Um, but I think I want, I'm just not quite sure which direction I need to go in order to make that profitable. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think I do better with live than I do with kind of record and edit, I think. But again, it's my thought, not necessarily the best thing. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Well, um, so grateful for you. And I can relate when I started to uh, really lean into YouTube, sometimes even investing in gear, which you got all the best stuff and you have it and you're set up, but it can sometimes be a way that we procrastinate from pressing yes. record. And I used to do that. I'd be like, I don't have the right lens. I need to get another lens until I shoot another video. Cause I was generally just, you know, trying to get over that hurdle of fear of, Am I going to be judged, fear of other people's opinions? How's this yeah. going to go? Am I going to look stupid on camera? And so you really do just got to press record and start shooting videos. You know, I think what you need to ask is you do need to ask how soon does your YouTube channel need to be profitable, if you will? Like, um, because sometimes the fastest path to profit, it may be whatever you already have set up through um, being on staff at your own ministry and, and giving in your nonprofit. It may be... Um, some other uh, thing that you're part of, or it may be your YouTube channel. If it needs to be a real profitable YouTube channel, it's almost like you could pick about going into uh, a, like a direct selling company that does clothing or like a direct selling company that does 
uh, you know, makeup or skincare or something, and then leverage your YouTube channel. And this is actually not my advice for you, but I want everybody to hear this just for coffee with Cannell. Um, like for example, unique is a, um, is a direct selling company that, uh, does makeup stuff. Right. So I think I looked up unique may beauty box. So they send out a box every month. And so this channel, for example, this video got seven views, 70 views, 86 views. So she just pressed record. The video is vertical, nothing fancy. She's talking clearly about the May Beauty box. And she says, check out the, the deets. Now, she's missed a ton of opportunities here. Only has one subscriber. So think about this. She's got 86 more views than her subscribers and is like mm. barely starting this, you know, like, but nevertheless, getting these different, uh, getting results because people are searching for the beauty box in May, 2020. Now in her description, she should have um, a link to buy the box and the product from her, which she would earn money from, probably more than affiliate marketing. And then also too, that you could join her team as a distributor. So all I'm saying is that would be a mm. practical way to profit. And there's different um, uh, direct selling companies to look at. This person, 1500 views, her unique presenter kit. She's breaking it all down. That's more views than her subscribers. So everybody's out here trying to just talk about a passion or something. She's going directly to her, uh, to something that's profitable because really when you have direct selling, you have a business in a box again, not actually mm -hmm. saying that this is what you have to look at this one. So this one starts on camera here and then the camera like flips. So there's like almost, there's no editing and there's just opening the box and like unboxing okay. what's in the box, 7,084 views. Okay. Channel wow. has 123 subscribers. And in the description, this is the way to do it. Want to see more products? Click here, links over to unique. And now she's able to make money. And again, I'm, assu I'm assuming this is actually around her passion for beauty and for makeup, et cetera. So that's one example of how I think about choosing a more profitable and practical niche. Now, in your case, though, I do think there's something about stacking and synergizing your ministry, your meeting as a group on Zoom, and you're starting a YouTube channel. And this is a longer path, but I would say, you know, a pastor is technically a thought leader. And the thought leader industry, the influencer industry, I don't mean like the Instagram influencer industry. I mean like the author, speaker, um, kind of industry, blogger, podcaster. The way you make money in that industry is through selling knowledge, through selling information. An author is selling information, okay. right? And uh, a and today- And I have, my, I, have a, I have a book. Perfect. Yeah. Do you, have you done an audio book? Did you do an audio? I have book not done an audio book. I've so always wanted to. Is your book on Amazon? No. It is, yes. What's the book called? It's called The Wine Press, The Making of a Quality Leader. Whew. So uh, what I would do, you do, so think about this. You have something to sell. So every single video you make can tie back to something to sell. That's like the practical thing to think about as a thought leader, as a, as a content creator. And so maybe you can send me, I might be kind of hard because I think you're on your phone, but I'm wondering, is it under your name? Tawana Thompson. Uh, the wine press is wine press two words. Uh, it's one word, the wine press. Okay. The wine press, the making of a quality leader. Um, uh, Yes. Let's see here. And it's Tawana T. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right. This is awesome. it right here, right? Yeah, great. that's it. Great, great. Yes, sir. So similar to you, I wrote a book years ago called YouTube for Churches. And so you know that if you sell a Kindle, you get seven bucks, right? 70%. And yes. yeah, yeah. And so um, there's something about... I would on YouTube create videos answering specific questions about leadership. 
I would actually probably better because that might be hard to break out in. I would join in your case, I'd be talking about, and I'd go into your members area in the YouTube hyper growth blueprint. And I would look at influence surfing and trend surfing. And I'd be talking about the topics of the day from a leadership perspective. I'd be talking about a lot of the very important topics right now regarding black lives, justice, uh, regarding, um, the United States, the world, how can we lead now? How can we navigate right now? How can we raise our voice for justice? How can we have grace and empathy from whatever, from your perspective? And then referencing your book. So you think about as, as a content creator, thought leader like you, you create free content and then you say, hey, and, and by the way, I talk about this more in my book, link in the description below. And as that scales up, you start just doing the math. This is like the practicality of it. You start thinking, okay, if I make $7 off a $10 ebook, because you get 70% on the Amazon uh, affiliate mm -hmm. or, or e you know, Kindle, EPUB, whatever the back end's called. If you sold 10 books a day, you're going to make $70 a day. 700 I get. No, no, no. So if you do seven times 10, you're going to make $70 a day. And that then becomes a foundation. Now, that, that's, that, that takes a while. Like you don't just upload a video, get 100 views and sell 10 books every single day. But now you've got to- I can't hear you at all. I love oh, audio. Uh, I think, can everybody else hear me? You may have lost me, but I wonder if the same thing happened to Chana. If you can't it hear just me. Went out. Just, it just completely went out. I don't know what happened. It might've went on like Bluetooth or something. It might've went, uh, somewhere else. So we may need to say goodbye, but I'll still give you a couple tips and we'll play the replay for you after Are you there? I can't, so, I can't hear you at all. You just went completely out. Can uh, everybody else hear me? I want to make sure. Okay, great. And so um, we, uh, I'll keep giving you some tips so you have the replay, uh, Tawana. But uh, I think that's the final conclusion. We really had two big strategies. And if you've been getting value out of today's Coffee with Can, I'll hit the like button and then um, and drop a comment of what your aha moment has been so far. So again, Look at that unique strategy. Sign up for unique, become a direct seller. By the way, if you were gonna do that, and like, am I saying you should become a direct seller? Not necessarily. I'm saying that's a vehicle to profit that becomes real practical during a pandemic. Guess what didn't go down during the Great Depression? Makeup and beauty. You know what else didn't go down during the Great Depression? Entertainment. Because people still needed to escape, still needed entertainment. And because especially ladies still wanted to look good. Come on. Even during the Great Depression, it was like, I might be buying cheaper makeup, but I'm still buying makeup. So uh, you got to be practical on your profit. And you, we saw, do you see how practical that was? You're making videos about whatever. Meanwhile, the May unique unboxing is getting 7,000 views, building your team, building your money. But- if you're a thought leader, and let me know if that's if you'd consider yourself a thought leader, you want to be in the thought leader industry, meaning you're a podcaster, content creator, you want to be an author, you want to speak on stages, you maybe want to make an online course. You got to figure out how to make money. And the key is to, to develop something to sell. The final thing I'd tell you, Tawanda, is to turn it into an audiobook because this is going to blow your mind, y'all. I would recommend if you want to get the audiobook for YouTube Secrets, go to tubesecretsaudio.com. And you can get it for free. But let me explain how that works. So if you go to Tube Secrets Audio, which all we did was uh, buy a URL from GoDaddy and redirect it. Okay. It redirects right here. So free with a 30-day trial, tubesecretsaudio.com. If somebody could do me a favor, wherever you're watching this, could you type that in the description for people? Uh, www.tubesecretsaudio.com. You get the book free and literally it's free. So you sign up for a trial. Even if you cancel, you get to keep the book. Okay. And if you stick with it, like I love audible, right? I, I joined free, uh, at one point and then I stick with it. I listen to all kinds of audiobooks. but Tawana, I want you to, uh, to make an audiobook, And this is a great strategy because guess what happens when people sign up for a free audible trial, you get paid $5. That's right. Even if they cancel, 
Like Amazon pays you $5. If they sign up for a gold membership, you get $10. And if they buy an audio book and they already have Audible, you only get 50 cents. So thanks for supporting the book. If you if you already have Audible and you buy the book, appreciate it. You know, 50, and I'm, I'm truly grateful. But we have made a lot of money, like a lot of money from giving our audio book away free. Come on, drop a little explosion emoji. Throw down a little bit of lightning bolt. I don't know. Get the bag emoji. Like giving away a free audiobook. So you teach free content on YouTube and say, hey, you want to go deeper on this and take this on the road with you. Grab my whole audiobook. You teach leadership, faith, business. Uh, I know we're going deep on this, but I think that you're probably getting some uh, some value um, out of that is, is do an audio book. And what you can do then is what we'll do is at the beginning of a video, we created a little ad spot, 15 seconds. And it's like, want to get a copy of YouTube secrets free, go to tube secrets audio. It's like Heather's voiceover on the think media team. And, and we just will interview other people, promote the audio book, do a podcast, promote the audio book, add some value, promote the audio book. Powerful. And we've made tens of thousands of dollars now. And mind you, we're at scale. We got big numbers. Um, but here's the deal. Um, just off the audiobook, we've made over 30,000 to be exactly specific. Does that seem crazy? That's real. And am I saying that that's, those results are typical? No. I'm, am I saying, though, that you could earn an extra $300 a month? from implementing these strategies and doing them really intentionally right now? Yes. Am I saying that this can be really practical? Yes. Am I saying that it starts with selling one or giving away one audiobook free a month and then it's one a week and then it's one a day and then it's five a day and then five a day is 50 bucks a day. And then it's evergreen and the money's coming in. And by the way, that's just one income stream. That is just one stream. You can imagine audiobooks, physical books, ebooks, YouTube ads, affiliate marketing. And so Tawana, that's what I'd say. Uh, I would actually lean into uh, ministry topics. I talk about trending topics from that sharp, prophetic, biblical perspective. I'd, I'd talk, I'd jump on the topics of the day. I would answer specific questions about faith, about leadership. And so a lot of that's Susan, in your members area. And by the way, you have access to VRA foundations. We just completely updated VRA. So I would recommend um, going into the Facebook group and make sure you've accessed the most recent training. Cause that's my best advice for you. It's all laid out in the brand new update. We just rolled out to the video ranking Academy. I think we have time for uh, one more, but I want to remind you, uh, today's coffee with Cannell is brought to you by think marketing. We launched a brand new YouTube channel. Why? Because we realized more than tech and cameras, um, you gotta know about this kind of stuff. Like, I think we had an unlock with the fact of how we can make money from audiobooks. You may not want or think you need to build an email list. This is what we learned. This is not a sexy topic. This is not a hot topic or whatever, right? This is a how to build an email list fast is a topic that you need though. It's like sometimes you do the stuff you want. Oh, I want to create, go live, cool. But then you also got to learn the skills you need to succeed, right? And so- Think Marketing is on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe over there. And we have a weekly podcast that comes out every Tuesday. It's on Apple iTunes. It's on um, Spotify. It's on Google. It's on everywhere podcasts are listened to. Let me know, A, question for you. Do you listen to podcasts? And B, um, where do you listen to podcasts? Tell me in the comments. And uh, definitely subscribe to Think Marketing, where we'll help you with all of these skills brick by brick. Well, we got Don um, on the coffee with Cannell, our nomadic story. Don, good to see you. How are you doing today? Tell people where you're streaming from and what it is you do. Yeah, so I'm streaming from my uh, RV and um, I'm in Pensacola. And, and what I do is uh, professionally, I'm in the IT services business, but I'm now starting my business and uh, uh, using video to support that. And our focus is on being able to support people uh, to live the life they imagine. And we want to do that in a nomadic backdrop. Yeah, because you're living the life you imagine by being able to travel, doing able to uh, to uh, live life on your own terms, right? 
Yeah, and with COVID right now, we're at our home base, which we refer to as hashtag nano RV park because it's basically a one-site RV park. And this is the original travel trailer we have. So I'm in the travel trailer because my wife is kind of happy that I work not inside the RV. But um, I'm focused on you know growing my 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 business. And my question to you really is, I'm focusing for 50 videos by the end of the year. So that means basically two videos a, a week. Um, I just this week is the first week I've gotten through two since I built my foundation. I'm mostly focused on building up a portfolio of 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 videos that will support my profit. So two thirds of my videos will be something with products or that have products associated with it. Right now I'm in a series going over the Berkey water filter. I have an affiliate program that I'm a part of. So I'm, I'm lining those up. And um, um, what I did was I, I started with um, taking this from Grow With Video Live, started and I've mapped out over 50 videos. And, and of those 16 of them, are my first 16 shows that I'm a podcast starting next week. So my question to you is, does it make sense? I'm not focusing on building influence per se. That's not my main focus. I want to build a portfolio of 50 videos so that I can then, as I'm building influence, people can land and start going around um, my videos and using them. And if I make some profit along the way, which I don't have to right now because I'm, I'm, uh, I have a good paying job, that sets me a foundation and, and within three to five years, I want to be able to decide if I will can do this full time and leave, leave corporate America. Yeah, I love it. Well, you know, it's nice to have the ability to, you've got the job, so you don't need to necessarily monetize immediately. Um, and I think those listening to this episode should consider that because if you are able to fund your passion, if you will, well, then it gives you different options and different, cho different choices. I do want to address a couple mindsets, Don. And I would say, I wouldn't hesitate or shrug away from saying, I don't want to build my influence. Of course you want to build your influence. You actually want to lean in and say, uh, I absolutely want to build my influence. I passionately want to build my influence. I aggressively want to build my influence. And why? I think sometimes we might hedge and say, you know, uh, maybe I don't want to be selfish or I don't want to be self-absorbed or I don't want to have a negative aspect of selfish ambition. But when you figured out not only have to have this great IT job and you figured out not only to live this awesome nomadic lifestyle and you're sharing great value and you're a man of integrity and family and impact, I want to encourage you that we need your influence more than a lot of the people that are influencing right now. Like you don't need just 64 subscribers. You need 640,000 subscribers because there's a lot of people with 640,000 subscribers, in my opinion, that shouldn't have a lot of influence because they're not uh, helping people with the values and, and just the helpful kind of content that people need in the world. So I think that I get it. Sometimes like, oh, you know, should I put myself out there? Like, is it arrogant or is it is it prideful or is it? Well, no, when you've got a good heart and you want to make a difference in people's lives, you should want a billion subscribers because if you're being good to people, helping them with stuff, being ethical, then why wouldn't you want to help as many people as possible? So if that's the case, then you actually want to ask yourself the question, how can I reach more people and how can I build my influence in the most effective way? That's thing one. Thing two I want to address is the punting of the, of, of the dream of maybe doing this full time down the road multiple years. It may take that long and thank God that you've got the infrastructure to with the IT job for it to take that long. That is, I think, the practicality all of us should have. If I had to wait, wait tables at Red Robin for 15 years or 20 years, um, which was where I was you know, serving burgers and being a waiter uh, every single week, then great. If I can go full time on YouTube at year 10 at Red Robin or year 15 or year 22, it's the dream no matter what. So I'm committed to doing whatever it takes. But I do believe there's a shorter path and a more practical path. And so as we get into that, what I would say is definitely upload at least a video a week and definitely do what you're doing. You may have already said this, but I hope you've unpacked VRA foundations a little bit, but we go so deep yep. into answering specific questions. And these are the types of videos that are so great because they're practically helping people 
that want to solve specific problems. And I got to share this with you. We have a new family member in the Think Media team called Big Blue. This is Heather's. It's just this past weekend, Heather Torres uh, just added Big Blue to the family. And uh, so Heather just kind of became like even your target audience. Like how do I yes. install a fluoride filter? Like how do I uh, prime the filter? And you know, fresh water versus the potable water. And there's, there's so many practical ways. What's cool about your channel is two things. I believe that it's perfectly positioned for both influence and for income because it solves a particular pro uh, problem. And to encourage everybody watching that caught, caught the whole stream, Don is in a position of having a gift because he is passionate about this, but it's also profitable and there's also proficiency. There's people that are looking for alternative forms of living that are like, shoot, times are so hard. Uh, I might want to actually just kind of move into a lower cost, more affordable. So what I, I guess what I would encourage you, John, uh, Don is, uh, is it's all there in VRA foundations, but specifically what I would do if I was you is I would answer as many specific questions as I could. And I would answer them in a couple different categories. One, yes, practical, RV travel related, um, like how to fix this and do this. I would, I, another category would be location-based things, uh, navigation-based things, like best path sites to see, 10 sites you should see, 10, 10 best, like you have so many opportunities. And this might sound crazy, but like what I'd be thinking is how do you get to your first 1,000 videos? Mm -hmm. How do you get to your first 1,000 videos? 10 must-see places in the US, um, and then five tips for reducing expenses, three ways to, and, and just and just going crazy, but really following the VRA system that you're already a part of. And so any thoughts on that or any feedback question on any of the stuff we talked about there? Yeah, so uh, I probably miscommunicated just a little bit. What, what, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm focusing on all the, the foundational things like the, the answering the questions and products and you know, the top five things you need to worry about, you know, as you start out on the road or whatever. What I was saying is I wasn't tailoring my content to only build influence. I plan to build influence through the content I have. My show is going to be more of the platform that's a little more, you know, out there to share more of my thoughts and, and, and those type things. And then when we get back on the road after all this COVID is, then you'll start seeing pretty places and things that'll draw you in. But the real thing I want to be able to do is, through all this, not to say, hey, this is a cool place, go look at it, is to say, if you live intentionally, you can change your life. And and nothing that you dream about or imagine is non-attainable. You can attain it anyways. So example, Heather, you mentioned, spent 18 years dreaming this dream, and she's now there, and she's now living it. And, and she is, and I would love right now, I'm inspired to want her to be part of my audience because I can help so much. So as soon as I saw that, I started spinning the wheel saying, what content can I focus on to help get ahead of where they're at, which is behind me, which is exactly what you teach in your training is, you know, look at yourself from three or five years ago, focus on that. And those are the people you want to make as your audience. So I really appreciate this time with you, Sean. Absolutely. And so my question then, and, and, uh, I'm glad we were synced up on that. And that sounds amazing. You, you got your strategy locked and loaded. When is the show start? The show's going to start next week. I've already yes. got it all prepped. Go video ahead. podcast? Yeah, it'll be a video podcast that I'm going to go through Libsyn and then uh, distribute. Nice. And so, yeah, that that's a great strategy. And what I love about that, for those listening too, Don's really doing it right, is that's a good intimacy piece. It's a good connection piece. Like you said, it's the lifestyle, the mindset. I love your confidence and your energy uh, and and the practical. There's the practical videos, answer specific questions, but then the invitation to listen to yours. Is it going to be a weekly show? Is that what you said? Yep. And my yeah. first video, first episode, is going to be named Just Press Record. Here we go, man. You got to just press record. Well, Don, appreciate you so much. And thanks so much for coming on. I'm so excited. Look, I, I literally cannot wait, first of all, for when you roll through Vegas and we do a meetup with Heather and uh, and uh, the team out here. And also your channel is going to really crush. 
It's a matter of just posting the video, staying consistent. And you know that it takes 35 to 55 videos just to kind of get things going. Um, but uh, inspired by everything you're doing. And could it be better timing for exactly when you find someone like a Heather? I'll say when we found Heather on all team, our team, as you know, she became the perfect person wanting to learn video. Now, now she's like wanting to learn RV, wanting to learn video. And like, oh, we were like, wow, we're so out of touch. We know so much. We've studied so much. I've been doing video for 15 years. And Heather was like, Sean, slow down. Talk more simply. <laughs> Actually help me. You know, like our 4S strategy, the questions we answered should be stupid, specific, simple starter questions because the curse of knowledge holds us back. So I'm so great that you have kind of that, if you will, an avatar or, and of course a friend as well, uh, to think about all the pain points that she'll be going through. And uh, man, I'm excited for the journey together uh, that we're on. Thank you very much, Sean. All right, take care, Don. Hey, Coffee with Cannell, the weekly Q&A show to help you with your questions related to business, social media, online marketing, YouTube, and life. And uh, if you got value, hit the like button on today's show. Brought to you by the Think Marketing Podcast. I saw some people that uh, like to just listen to audio podcasts only, some video podcasts only, um, and I know that uh, a couple of people shared a few different plat. Pl platforms like Repond. Let me know where you listen to podcasts. And if you haven't started, people listen to Google Play. Um, if you haven't started listening to a podcast, a great one to start with and to subscribe to is the Think Marketing Podcast. Um, every single week, every Tuesday, in fact, we drop a new episode to help you grow and scale your business with online video and the latest money-making strategies for um making money online, as well as helping you maximize online video and social media across uh, all the different channels. The reason we started a new YouTube channel was because Fig Media is going much more into the best cameras and microphones and um, all those types of things that uh, you need, the tools really, and the tech that you need for building your influence um, with video. And so our newest channel called Think Marketing, which is where we post the video podcast version, is uh, a new YouTube channel as well. So subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you got value out of today and you think this kind of conversation and this kind of content would be helpful, it, the way, this is, you know, of course, all free, um, a way that you could share that gratitude is just share it with somebody that it could help. We really believe that uh, we need to think different during this time, pivot during this time, adjust during this time. There's a lot of disruption going during this time and it's easy to focus on what's going bad, um, but hidden in every obstacle is hidden opportunity. And entrepreneurs solve problems for a profit and the world's got problems right now. Can I get an amen? We got some problems. Your, your spouse, has got some problems right now. Can I get an amen? No, 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 don't, no, no. You, you could, you could still type that because it's true. Come on, we all got problems. We all got issues. And uh, that's the power of entrepreneurship, of content creators, help people sleep, help people deal with anxiety and burnout, help people live a lifestyle of freedom if they want to potentially live on the road and uh, do something like our nomadic lifestyle, help people, um, solve problems in all types of different areas, help people with online video, with social media, you know, don't even worry about if you're like, well, Sean, you're already doing it. I feel like I could help with social media and digital marketing. Are you kidding? Everybody needs to learn these skills right now. The most in-demand skills, um, Heather just posted, so I might be able to look it up. She was sharing it with our team and it was uh, a Noah Keegan post talking about industries that are going up right now. Listen to this. Um, Five professions that are on the rise in 2020 based on Google search. TikTok editor, up 733%. Online dog trainer, up 180%. Instagram marketer, up 155%. Squarespace designer, that's a web designer, but specifically helping people get their Squarespace website set up, 129%. Podcast editor, up 91%. Percent and there's a carousel here, so you can see the different Google trends and whatnot. It's time to pivot. There are, yeah, there's a lot of hardship, a lot of things going down, but there's a lot of things going up. So you want to position yourself for the new economy for the wave, and that's what the Think Marketing Podcast, Coffee with Cannell, and Think Media is committed to. 
We're helping you learn online video, live streaming, and social media. So let's stay connected. If we um, aren't connected on Instagram, I would love to vibe with you over there at Sean Cannell on Instagram. Sean Cannell rhymes with YouTube channel. And I post a lot of uh, Instagram TV content to just kind of keep you with tactical things like best export settings for YouTube videos. That's going to be in the feed there. So you could, you know, turn on notifications or whatever. And uh, as well as daily Instagram stories and whatnot to uh, help keep you inspired or give you some practical uh, content. So all of that is happening on Instagram at Sean Cannell. This is our weekly show, Coffee with Cannell. And I want to thank you for being here. Episode 10. Guess what? This show started because of the lockdown. This show started because we were pivoting ourselves. I didn't even have a show. I was scared. I didn't even want to go live with StreamYard in 720p because I'm a tech nerd and I thought 27p was beneath me. But some of you didn't even notice. And some of you are super offended like I am. But guess what? Done is better than perfect. Grab a USB mic, put in a light, grab a webcam, even though they're back ordered and on webcam famine right now because of the lockdowns. But find a way, use your phone. Use your laptop webcam and start creating content. We started a weekly Q&A show and now I've been able to connect with so many people because it was a response to what's happening in the world right now. You got to pivot your plan, man. You got you to gotta pivot. What other option do you have? I know you're scared. Go live today. I know you're scared. Shoot that video, edit it, upload it. I know you're nervous. Press record. You got to punch fear in the face. You got to press report, record, poop your pants scared. Facts. You got to press record, armpit sweaty. Knees weak, mom's spaghetti. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. Anybody know that reference? Shout out in the comments if you know that reference. Okay, we should land the plane. Uh, hey, uh, appreciate you so much. Smash the like button if you got uh, value out of today. See you next week on all the, the, the various shows. And uh, if you want some more content, go check out uh, the uh, Think Marketing Podcast. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.